this is some crowd. This is what our group. I know so many of the people, all these people. They're tough as hell. They're from Georgia. They should be tough. I want to just say a special hello to Georgia. You have a lot of excitement going on outside. You know that, right? Right, Kelly? We have a lot of excitement going on outside. We're doing very well, they tell me. But, you know, one day's not too much. But uh, looks like we're doing pretty well. What do you think? Congressman Barry? Yeah? I hear what you're doing. I'm thrilled to be back in the incredible state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are. You are hard workers, and it's going to pay off. We're going to take back our country. We're going to turn it around so fast. Before we begin, I want to send our love and prayers to everyone here in Georgia, hit by the hurricanes. You got hit hard, as well as Florida, North Carolina. They really got hit hard. South Carolina got hit pretty hard. Virginia, Alabama, and Tennessee. That's a lot of hurricane. That was a big hurricane. I thought we were sort of over. Yeah, that's Trump country. You're right. It's, uh, it's Trump country. It is indeed. We love it. We love the people. We wish they took better care of Trump country, right? Amen. Our hearts are with the families of every citizen who is tragically lost and all of the people who lost their home. A lot of homes were lost, too. A lot of people were lost. The citizens of Georgia are tough and resilient, and the state is going to come back stronger than ever. We're going to make sure it comes back stronger than ever. And I want to thank you, Governor Brian Kemp. He's done a really good job. And his staff for the work he's done and they've done. And God bless you all, despite the storm. Early mail-in voting in your state is now underway. And early in, po in person is underway. But I'll tell you what, I'm hearing very good things now. It hasn't been going on too long, but we're seeing numbers. They're saying, wow, those are big numbers. So, in fact, they set a record for the number of ballots today, right? The numbers, right? So if you have a ballot, return it immediately. If not, go tomorrow as soon as you can. Go to the polls and vote. Then, for the next 21 days, Get everyone you know to get out and vote. We don't want to take a chance. We can't lose this country. We're going to lose our country if, we, if we're not successful. We're going to lose our country. From the very beginning of this journey, I've been on a mission to rescue our nation from a failed and corrupt political establishment. And are they corrupt? 500,000 dollars for a painting. That's not good, is it, huh? I said, well, that one they'll never get away with, Byron. I said, no way. How did Byron do it? Did he do a good job of it? Right. Great. Great guy. Stand up, Byron. Big star. Barry, he's going to be, he's going to be a big star, this guy. Do I have him right? He's going to be a big, big, he already is a big star if you get right down to it. Thank you very much. Good job. I heard every word. I was taking pictures. I said, boy, that guy's doing a good job. And to give you back the country that you believe in, the country you were born in, and the country that you deserve, that's what you want. Everywhere you look under Kamala Harris, the American standard of living is in a free fall. Nothing works. You ever notice nothing works? It's like everything they touch turns to, uh, I won't say it. No, everything they touch, including their rescue plan, which they didn't even have a plan. You're working more hours for less money to afford smaller houses, worse cars, fewer groceries, with absolutely nothing left to save. Our schools don't teach. Our cities aren't safe. Illegal aliens are pouring in by the millions and millions and millions, and we're teetering on the brink of World War III. Other than that, I think we're doing quite well. <laughs> Kelly's saying, man, this is really depressing. But exactly three uh, — and uh, look, we're down, we're down to the wire now, when you think, huh? Three weeks from tonight, the people of Georgia are going to end Kamala Harris's reign of failure. And we are going to launch a new golden age of American success for the citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. 
going to be a golden, golden time. And I want to congratulate, I want to thank a man named Elon Musk because he did a big favor. He did. You know, when I was down here, early on, I was down and we were with the folks and they were going, uh, sir, we, we need Starlink. I said, what the hell is Starlink? He said, do you know Elon Musk? It's the most incredible thing because especially in North Carolina, they had no communication whatsoever. They were just right there. They were just wiped out and they had no communication and uh, it's hard to get. It's hard to get. So I called up Elon and he, he endorsed me. He gave me the greatest endorsement. And how about that rocket the way it came in yesterday? Was that, oh, was that crazy? Was that crazy? You know, I was on the phone with somebody, and I have the television on, no sound or anything. And I'm looking at the screen, but I'm talking to somebody. I guess couldn't have been that interesting a person, but I, and I'm, I'm watching the screen and this big monster, the thing's like 20 stories tall, and it's coming down, the fire's pouring out of it from all angles, and I say, I don't know, I, well, could you hold on a minute? I want to say, there's something happening on television. I've never seen anything like this, Brandon. The great Brandon Beach. Does everybody know Brandon? Great. Thank you, Brandon. What a good patriot he is. But I said, I've never seen anything like this. So it's coming down, down, down. And I said, oh, man, it's going to be terrible. It's going to hit the gantry or whatever they call it. It's going to hit. It's going to knock it over. Marjorie Taylor Greene's going to knock it over. It's going to knock it on its ass like you knock your competitors on their ass, Marjorie. Right? And she does. She is highly respected, let me tell you. Smart. So it's coming down, and I didn't like the angle. I said, come on, baby. And then all of a sudden, you see that fire pouring from the right side. It straightens up. Boom. I mean, the thing. And I said, that was amazing. And I forgot the guy that was on the phone. He was, he was you know, they have a certain respect. We're, we're leading everybody, so they hold on forever. The, you know, they would have held on for Doug. They would have held on for an hour, but I just totally forgot because I've never seen anything like this. So Elon, I said, Elon, could you do me a favor? Starlink, yes, what would you like about it? I said, they need hundreds of them in North Carolina and also in Georgia. They really want them in Georgia too because they lost their wires, they're down. And I'm talking to them, and as I'm talking, I get a call from somebody in North Carolina, thank you for the Starlink. And I said, how the hell did you do that? Oh, it's true. Elon. He's different. <laughs> no, he's different. And I said, Elon, I don't know what Starlink is, but they like it. They like it. But no, it was it was sort of funny because I'm on the phone and he it's all it's all done. And I'll tell you what, it got here and he, it was delayed once it got here. There was bad things happened, you know, that's happened with a lot of people, but they ultimately they got it. And I said, How does it compare to the lines? They said it's better. And I mean, the guy just is a fantastic guy. So we want to thank him for his big endorsement. And he really does. You know where he is right now? He's in Pennsylvania campaigning for me. Is that great? He's in Pennsylvania campaigning. And we were in Butler, Pennsylvania, honoring Corey, the firefighter who lost his life. Two other good guys, by the way, two other very good guys. But he lost his life, and Elon was there, and he wore the black hat. I did, I did not know we had a black hat. It's black with black letters, okay? And he called it Dark MAGA. And he hasn't taken it off. He loves that hat. No, but we want to thank him. He's been really great. He's a great patriot. He's a brilliant guy, too. I mean, who could? I said, does anybody else do that with the Rockets? Because I've been watching this stuff for a long time. Byron, have you ever seen that before? I said, can the Russians do it? No. Can... NASA do it? No. Can anybody do it? No, only me. I said, keep it going, man. That's pretty cool. It's the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. Pretty cool. You know, we got to protect our brilliant people. We got to remember that. Our there aren't too many brilliant people around. Not too many, right, Marjorie? Marjorie knows better than anybody. There aren't too many. Oh, your lieutenant governor's right there. Look at this. We have big power, huh? Thank you, bro. With your vote, we will create millions of new great-paying jobs. Wages will sort. Your taxes, your taxes are going to fall. You saw that. 
Your net worth will skyrocket. America will be confident again. You know, America has lost its confidence. It's a terrible thing to say. I said it one time, and I said, you know, it's actually true, but it's going to come back very quickly. America will be respected again. The American people will be optimistic again. And you will be proud of the life and the future you are going to give and giving to your children. Our legacy will be nothing less than the rebirth of the American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore. You don't hear about the Amer — we used to hear about the American dream. My father used to say, you want to live the American dream, son. And I said, what's the American dream, Dad? And I didn't quite make it. I wanted to make it. No, I could have the American dream. You know what? I had the American dream that I need this, but I wouldn't swap it. I wouldn't swap it, Byron. I was saying yesterday, I could be — I could be on — on the waters of Monte Carlo, I could be all over the world enjoying myself, but I'd much rather be right here with you, it's true, because we have a mission. We have a mission. And we don't have a choice, right? You know, we really don't have a choice. Somebody said, why are you doing this? I said, because we don't have a choice. We're going to make America great again. What's better than that? I have a lot of rich friends. They go here, they go there. They're boring as hell. Nobody cares. They put on their bathing suit. They don't look a lot better than Biden. <laughs> and they're in, except they have fancier beaches, right? Tell you about it, please. I don't want to. I don't want to mention. I will not mention the fact that she didn't pass her bar exam. So I'm not going to mention that. But with our victory, we'll become the greatest, strongest, freest, safest, and the most powerful nation the world has ever seen. We're going to put it back together fast. Four years ago, we were respected. Now they laugh at us. Other countries laugh at us. I had a good interview today with Bloomberg. Did anybody see that? That was a great interview. He was a Trump hater. And brilliantly, my staff didn't tell me that. I said, uh, who is this guy? Sir, uh, he hates you very much. He's been after you. For so they got me all, all started before I went up. But it, it was a great interview. And I think it really showed the plan that we have, because he was unable to dispute it. We're going to bring so many companies back into our country. And a lot of them are going to be based right here, right in the great state of Georgia. There's going to be a lot, of, a lot of things happening. It's going to happen very fast. Remember, I used to say, we're winning too much. You're going to say to me, Marjorie's going to come with the lieutenant and Lieutenant Governor and Doug. And Kelly's going to be there. Got a lot of cash, I'll tell you. <laughs> and Louder Milky's coming in with this beautiful family. And you're going to be begging me. You're going to be saying, please, sir, there are too many companies coming into Georgia. Please, please. We can't take it anymore. We don't have enough people for the jobs. Please, we don't want any more companies. We don't want any companies. That was the takeoff on the winning. We're going to win so much. You're going to come, please, sir. We can't win anymore. We're winning too much. We had a lot of fun. And we had a lot of fun. We have a new one now. All those companies are going to be pouring in. But starting on day one, I will quickly defeat inflation, and we will, we're going to bring down the energy prices fast, fast, liquid gold. And we will make America affordable again. Prices are still going up. You know, they're going up again. And they surged again very viciously last month. And here we go again. And Kamala Harris has — she has no idea what's happening. They say, what do you think of inflation? What? What do you think of inflation? Uh, she didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Other than that, she's got it right under tow, right? Now, she didn't really know what they were talking about when they said inflation. What is it? Kamala Harris has developed a policy. You know what her plan is called? I have no plan to fix it. That's what she says. That I have no plan to fix it. She's changed 15 policies. You know, 
on occasion, somebody will run and change one, like they'll be for the death penalty or not for the... She's changed 15 policies, no fracking, no this, every single thing she's changed. Go back a year and a half and take a look. 15 policies. I've never seen anyone get away with one major change. The whole thing is different. She loves walls now. She loves walls. <laughs> she loves our police, but she was in charge of defund the police. Do you go from a defunder of the police? I don't think so, Lieutenant Governor. From, do you go from a defunder? She was a leader of defund the police, and now she says, I love the police. In the meantime, I got every police group in the nation is supporting me. And the Border Patrol came out. Did you see that? The Border Patrol came out. Thousands and thousands of them came out. Two nights ago, when they endorsed uh, Trump, they said uh, we endorsed the most beautiful. Paul gave a beautiful speech. Incredible people. I know them all very well. They never met her. They never spoke to her. They were asked, did you ever get a call from anybody in Border Patrol? Yes. Did you ever call them back? No. They never once spoke to anybody, even in authority or not authority. Nobody. They never spoke. And here we have the biggest travesty. I believe it's a bigger problem because of the murderers and everything else coming into it. I believe, look, inflation and the economy are always big, and they're big, what they've done to our economy. But I really believe that the border and the illegal immigration and 21 million people, many of them criminals, is a bigger thing than inflation. I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but I think so. It's rated number three after the economy and inflation. I put them sort of together, economy, inflation. I think they sort of belong together. What do you think? I think so. But I think the biggest thing is when you have uh, 13,099 murderers, people that are four people that were ready to be executed, they said, rather than executing them, we'll let them come into America. 13,099, many of them, many of them killed, many of them killed more than one person, and they're happily ensconced in Georgia. They're all over the country. And these are killers. These are people that will kill you quickly. They don't need too much of an excuse. They have, as they say, they have, as they say, a short fuse. Uh, you don't want to get into a little tiny argument that for somebody else would be an argument for them. It's not good, right? It's not a good situation for you. No, we don't want them in this country. We're getting them out of this country fast, fast. And I think it's, I think it's a bigger, I think it's bigger than the economy. I think it's bigger as, as horrible. You know, inflation is a country buster. It's busted many countries, but I think it's bigger than inflation even. Over the past four years, her inflation nightmare has cost the typical family $29,000. Think of that, $29,000 in inflation. The reason you feel poorer is thanks to Kamala, and that's the fact is you are. And she was the one. They called her the taxing queen in San Francisco. You know, she destroyed San Francisco. San Francisco, if you go back 18, 19 years ago, it was the number one city. It was the best city in the country. Now it's not even livable. And I speak against myself. You know, I own property in San Francisco, right? I own a lot of property. I own property in California. And every time I say this, I say, you know, I'm saying, please don't say it in my police. Because every time I say it, I depreciate the value of my property. <laughs> Guys that would have said, I love that place you have that I own on the water, the most gorgeous things right on the ocean. I always say, I have the ocean. Pebble Beach only has the bay. That's my, that's my it. And I never even need it because it's always full. But I have the ocean. Pebble Beach has the bay. The truth is, every time I speak this way, I hurt the value of my property. But ultimately, I don't give a damn because this is much more important. She destroyed. She destroyed, along with Gavin Newsom, the governor, Gavin Newsom. They destroyed it, the two of them. What she did to San Francisco, and then she became Attorney General. What she did to California is a disgrace. And now she wants to do that to the United States of America. We're not going to let that happen, Marjorie. Her plan will raise taxes for the typical American family by an estimated 3 
thousand dollars. Take a look at this. Joe Biden and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Calling for a full repeal of President Trump's tax cuts. If Kamala Harris was elected president, there are many different tax policies which could cripple the economy. But the first thing she wants to do is allow these Trump tax cuts to expire. Even the New York Times admits that 85% of the middle class got a tax cut. Americans will face a hike. The Tax Foundation finding that a couple with two kids making $165,000 a year would have to pay over $2,400 more in taxes. And on day one, I will repeal that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to work to get rid of that tax cut. Joe and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to get rid of that tax cut. Everything from a 70 to 80% tax rate. I think that's fantastic. We've got to increase the corporate tax rate. Part of that is going to be about repealing that tax bill that they just passed. And also looking at estate taxes are going to have to go up. We will tax capital gains. But we're going to have to raise corporate taxes. Taxing unrealized gains just doesn't seem fair in any sense of the word. When the value of your home goes schools, up, you pay higher tiring. taxes even if and you don't sell your go, home. If your value of your home never moves the way Both the stock city. moves to say, we're going to tax what you don't have. That's a sore point and it's a big deal. Is that something you think she firmly believes in? I think it's part of the proposals of the campaign. Under my plan, there will also be a, a carbon fee. There has to be some connection between um, the fee and bad behaviors, and there has to be, in, in that we have to monitor whether it's going to be passed on to consumers. But I'm going to tell you that should never be the reason not to, to, to actually put a fee, and in particular, a carbon fee. Don't let Kamala Harris fool you. Harris not only supports taxing service workers' tips, news reports confirm Biden and Harris have weaponized the IRS to confiscate your tip money. Harris and Biden have literally unleashed the IRS to harass workers who receive tips. And they just may be coming to your house next. Only President Trump has a plan that ends all taxes on service workers' tips. President Trump, he's on your side. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. You know, the only problem with putting it up, the fake news, and there's a lot of them back there. So I have a lot of friends. No, I have a lot of friends. They watch the rallies on television. This isn't a rally. This is just a get-together. Look at it, all the way up to the bleachers. But they watch. Hello up there. It's a nice place. But they watch. A friend of mine comes. He says, you know, the only problem is when you put up the videos, they don't show it on television. You know why? Because they don't want to move the camera a little bit up. They don't want to because they don't want to do anything that's good for us. They don't want to do anything that's good for us. And you know what? They ought to be ashamed of themselves. I'm going to ask them to put on woke. Do you know this? what this is all about? We don't have a woke military. But some people think there are some people in the top. Can you put that woke military, put it up, the master sergeant? Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. And actually, let's declare it a summer of pride. So you're a killer. Sir, yes, sir. Let me see your war face. Sir, you got a war face? Ah! That's a war face. Now let me see your war face. Ah! Bullshit. You didn't convince me. Let me see your real war face. So we won two beautiful, big, 
horrible in many ways, but we won two world wars with that attitude. And uh, we didn't win with the woke stuff, but our military is not woke. We have some people on the top that are woke. They'll be gone so fast, your head will spin, okay? <laughs> Under the Trump administration, we will put more money in your pocket. We will let you keep more money than you ever thought possible. We're bringing it down. We're bringing the cost down. We will have large tax cuts for workers, and we are going to have something very special. No tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors. No tax. That's a big one. And you deserve it. You know what? You put up with inflation for the last two and a half years. That shouldn't have ever been here. Would have never been here. Think of it. We wouldn't have had the war with Russia and Ukraine. No way Russia would have done it. We wouldn't have had — you wouldn't have had October 7th with Israel. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had that horrible, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, the way they withdrew. We were going to withdraw, but we we're also going to keep Bagram, the biggest military base in the world. We gave it to China. You know who has it now? China has it. One hour away from where they make their nuclear weapons. And on that day, we lost 13 great soldiers, and many were obliterated. No arms, no legs. Uh, the face was just disastrous. What they — what these people — nobody ever mentions them. But we had a lot of people badly, badly hurt. And uh, what a shame. What a shame to see what's happened to our country, the border. All of the things that we've suffered in the last almost four years, we're going to get it back so fast. We're going to be proud again. We're going to be very proud of our country. Isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need a teleprompter? What do you think, Byron? It's better, right? Huh? Did you see when her teleprompter crashed last night? She was talking about 32 days, Mr. Congressman. 32, she goes, and the election will be in 32 days. 32 days. The teleprompter crashed. 32 days. She kept going. Oh, I would have loved to — you know, it kicked back in. It's called a kickback. <laughs> like, some people know a lot about a kickback. It's called a kickback. They know in this administration. But, no, it's a kickback. It kicks back in. And it did kick back in just in time, because she was about ready to eat the gun. <laughs> Byron goes, yeah. This was — you know, when you do this, you have to have one ability. If the teleprompter goes — because it goes, I figured, 5 percent of the time. It goes. It's gone. And you're standing up in front of all of the fake news, which is actually a much bigger audience than this, because you've got millions of people watching. So you're standing in front of the fake news with fake reporters and, you know, some very bad — and some good ones. And some good ones. I'd say 5 percent. Right? What do you think, Barry? 5 percent? I think so. 5 percent, maybe less. But — and if that happens, and if you don't do this well, you are ridiculed the following day, right? And I've, I've had to go off with Bernie Marino in Ohio. I was doing very well. But I had 57,000 people out there, television blazing, and he's going for the nomination, and it wasn't looking good. The wind was blowing at 49 miles an hour. And I got onto the stage, and I'm looking at these two things, and they were like, so you can't read them. But I said, don't worry about that. They're going to blow off. And within the first minute, they blew off the stage. They were like, 30 yards down the road, and I'm standing there. And that's when you find out whether or not you have what it takes, right? You're up there all by yourself. You're up there all by yourself, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. And you better get going. You can't do that 32 stuff that she was doing. Why, why did he have to fix that damn teleprompter? But it is true. If you, I have a friend, he just wants to go into politics, but he's petrified of — he said, I, I have one phobia. He's a very smart guy, very rich guy. He wants so much to be in politics. I said, do you have any problems? Well, 
I have a problem with, uh, I have a phobia against public speaking. I said, don't go into politics. <laughs> if you have that phobia, I would not bother, right? What do you think, Byron? No good, right? He wouldn't come up and warm up the crowd like you did, would he? It's there. Get me off. <laughs> to crush inflation, we will quickly become energy independent, and we will frack, 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 and drill, baby, drill. <laughs> she won't frack. She's not going to frack. She's not going to frack Pennsylvania. Please, Pennsylvania, remember, she's not fracking. Her whole life is, we will not frack. We will not frack. She's just go through a whole life like this. All of a sudden, oh, I look forward to fracking. No, it doesn't. I will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months. You're going to get them in half, 50% in 12 months. Because we have liquid gold, nobody else has it. We became number one with me, number one in the world in oil. We have oil and gas, number one. Russia was number two. Saudi Arabia was number one. We were number three or number four. When I left, we were so far above them, and we were going to be not only, you know, we were energy independent. We were going to be energy dominant. We were going to sell to Asia. We were going to sell. We were going to pay off a lot of debt. We were all set to go. And then we had a great election because we got millions more votes, but something happened a little bit. We can't let that happen again. We're not going to let that happen. Look what happens when bad things like that happen. I will cancel Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate immediately. Everybody will drive an electric car, they say. And soon, the problem is they don't go far. They're very expensive. They're made in China. And they have some other things. Now, with that being said, I think they're phenomenal. They, they really are. I say that because of Elon. You know, you know Elon, <laughs> they are phenomenal, by the way. But, you know, for certain whatever. And we're going to have hybrids. We're going to have gasoline-propelled cars. We're not going to have hydrogen cars. You know, hydrogen cars is the new thing, right? Do you know about that? Hydrogen is the new car. They say it's great. has one problem. If it explodes, you're dead. If it explodes, they actually say, if it explodes, you're unrecognizable. You call your wife over. They call up the wife, would you please come here and take a look and see whether or not this is your husband, because we cannot see. And she goes to the nearest tree, which is about 100 yards away, and she says, no, it's only blood. There's nothing there. She says, I can't tell. So hydrogen has one problem. It's extraordinarily dangerous. Other than that, the car works quite well, actually. I won't get near. I will never get. I don't care how good it becomes. No, no matter. And they'll probably say they're making it safe, but it'll never be safe enough for us congressmen, right? I also announced last week that we will make interest on car loans fully tax deductible. Because affording a car is essential to restoring the American dream. You know, I got a call from a big guy on Wall Street said, where the hell did you come up with that idea? Think of how simple that is. How great is that? Because now we're going to make more cars because of it, right? They said, where did you come up? You know, when you think it's so simple, it was mentioned to me by somebody a week ago. I said, has nobody think a car loan deductible? Wouldn't that be nice? It's going to spur the industry. But what's really going to spur the industry is what we're doing with taxes and tariffs. Every company is going to come pouring back. But the interest deduction is so great. And I say it's like the paperclip. 125 years ago, a guy took a piece of metal and he started playing games with it. And he had the paperclip. And now since then, everybody that's seen the paperclip says, shit, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's so simple. That's like that for the car loans, right? It was so simple. Nobody thought. The biggest guy on Wall Street called me. The smartest guy. He's got like 183 IQ. He said, where the hell did you come up with that idea? That's pretty good. As we rebuild our economy, we will also restore our borders, if you don't mind. Yeah. For four straight years, Kamala has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from prisons and jails and insane asylums and the worst mental institutions anywhere in the world, not South America, all over the world. They come from Venezuela. They come from the Congo in Africa. And she has resettled them very nicely into our communities to prey upon our innocent American citizens, right? 
When I win on November 5th, the migrant invasion ends and the restoration of our country begins. It's going to be a restoration. One of the deadliest and most vicious migrant gangs said nice people. The only thing nice about them, they make our criminals look like nice people. Because now we say, you know, I thought those guys were tough. They're really not tough, not compared to these guys. Remember when she said, uh, migrants coming in do not cause crime. Really? Check out the front page of the New York Post today. They've taken over Midtown Manhattan. But one of the deadliest and most vicious migrant gangs that Kamala has imported into our country is the savage Venezuelan prison gang known as Trende Aragua. Have you heard of them? Trende Aragua. In Aurora, Colorado, and communities in all 50 states, this gang is terrorizing law-abiding citizens, including taking over multiple apartment complexes. And they are really going, and they are vicious as hell. Take a look at it. Open borders, deadly consequences. Border crisis, record high crossings are putting a strain on cities across America. It is a full-blown invasion. Armed Venezuelan gang members storming an apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado. And when people talk about migrant crime, this is what they're talking about. Biden and Harris had created a program to bring them in under humanitarian parole. I am in favor of saying that we're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder had been released into the United States. My 20-year-old daughter, Kayla Hamilton, was murdered in her own room. Kayla's murderer was apprehended by Border Patrol crossing illegally into the U.S. Kayla's murderer had been improperly released into the United States. Abolish ICE. Yeah, we need to probably think about starting from scratch. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. The suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. More than a dozen people suspected of being Tren de Aragua gang members right here in San Antonio. The gang members had been terrorizing the apartment complex. New details in the murder of Lake and Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national. And was paroled and released into the country by the Biden administration. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nungaray. Court documents suggest a group of men arrested for beating and robbing a Dallas woman last month are members of a Venezuelan street gang. Manuel Hernandez Hernandez was booked by Colleyville police just two days earlier and released the day before the robbery. And that's number one. That's number one. I will tell you right now. That, that beats out the economy. That beats it all out to me. It's not even close. The United States is now an occupied country. But on November 5th, 2024, that will be Liberation Day in America. Liberation Day. Thank you. So sad. This is what you call an unforced error, what they've done to this country. And to think that she's running for the President of the United States is a disgrace. And she's allowed millions of these people into our country, destroying our country. And it's not easy to fix either. We'll get some and we'll get them out. Then they'll get somebody else who has a nice look and a child. And it'll be the poster. It'll be, oh, how, how horrible are we? It's a very tough thing to fix, but we're going to fix it because we have no choice. But we're going to start with these horrible criminals, and there are lots of them. 425,000 illegal aliens convicted of crimes are now free to roam in our country, including all of those murderers and all of those drug dealers and all of the human traffickers in women. In women, they want, they traffic in women. You hear children, you hear men. No, they traffic really in women. Right here in Georgia, our nation was robbed of a brilliant 22-year-old nursing student, Lakin Riley. You know Lakin very well now. And after months of prodding him, Biden couldn't pronounce her name. He said, uh, 
He said, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, and Lincoln Riley's the football coach, or coach, and uh, this was in Congress, couldn't even get the name right. Uh, Lincoln was a brilliant young student, top in her class, going to be a great nurse, nursing student. Everybody admired her. She was killed viciously while out on a jog. She was uh, assaulted, beaten, and horrifically murdered by an illegal alien. You saw the picture from Venezuela. The savage monster who murdered Lakin was let in and released into our country by Kamala Harris. She came in through open borders. Nobody even checked him. Come right in. Come right in. His brother was also in Georgia illegally. He suspected of uh, murdering a viciously murdering someone also in the Venezuelan gang. He's in that gang in September. An illegal alien who Kamala imported through her open border process was arrested in Tennessee for strangling a 25-year-old girl to death and leaving her body covered in blankets for days. Her parents, oh, her parents, all of these parents, they'll never be the same. He had a prior arrest record in the United States, was shielded for deportation by the horrible, horrible laws, rules, and regulations of Kamala. I can't believe how they allowed this country to become like this. This country is not, it can't go on like this. And they're getting worse. You look at little towns, villages, cities, and even the big cities, they're petrified that this is going to happen to them. The governor of Colorado is a radical left Democrat, but he, he just doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. Springfield, Ohio. Uh, we love Ohio. We won Ohio every time by a lot. We're leading now by a lot. And I know Springfield, beautiful little place. 50,000 people. They've just deposited 32,000 illegal migrants into the town. They don't speak English but they've taken up the schools. They don't speak English. What they're looking for is interpreters because they have no idea what they're going to do. Nobody speaks. Very few of them speak English. So they're looking all over for interpreters. That's what they want to find. When you go to the hospital, you can't get into the hospital because the hospital's all occupied. And they want to be so nice and they want to be politically correct. And the mayor seems like a nice person. He's saying, well, we'll figure out how to make it work. But you can never figure it out. It can never work. Think of it. 50,000 people, all of a sudden, they have 32,000. They've almost doubled the size with people that came from a rough country, really a rough, rough country. Immediately upon taking the oath of office, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. After I will rescue every town across America that has been invaded and conquered. They've conquered our country. This is an invasion of a military force. They have weapons that are on par with our U.S. military. But we will put these vicious and bloodthirsty criminals to jail or kick them the hell out of our country, ideally the second, because we don't want to have to — we don't want to have to pay for the cost, so we'll ideally bring them back to their country. When I first came into the White House, a general came up. I said, General, I want to get MS-13 gangs. They're the worst in the world. MS-13 is very similar, but probably even nastier. And we had thousands of them in our country because Barack Hussein Obama could not get them out because the countries from where they came would put airplanes, big ones, on the runway so you couldn't land. They wouldn't let the buses through. And they gave up. Years ago, they gave up. And I said to the general, I want them out. He said, sir, they won't take them back. I said, who? And they said the countries. I won't embarrass them because I know the presidents very well. And they're very streetwise, very smart people. And I said, how much aid do we give those three countries? Sir, we give them $750 million a year. And I said, inform them that they're delinquent, that they aren't allowing us to bring back people that belong there, and they are getting no further aid at all from the United States. <laughs> Thank you.
And the following day, early in the morning, I got calls from all three separately, all three. Sir, there seems to be a misunderstanding. And I said, no, there isn't. You sent them over in a caravan. The caravan. I made up that name, too. I'm good at names. You know the names? <laughs> I can't use those names too much because many of them were for Republicans. We had some beauties, but we can use Pocahontas and other people. <laughs> but, but I said, listen, I said, you wouldn't take them back. Sir, uh, there seems to be a misunderstanding. We would love to take them back. We love MS-13 so much, sir. Please, please let us take them back, sir. Please. And we sent them back, and they took them like nothing. Like nothing. So we send them out of our country, and if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. That way, they're not coming back. That way, they're not coming back. And you don't hear these ideas from anyone else, I can tell you. And I'm not proud of them, but you also have to wage a little bit of common sense, don't you? Because we're the party of common sense. And I'm hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. Kamala's migrant invasion, and that's what it is, is also devastating our great African-American community, stealing American jobs, crushing wages, undercutting the voting power of our own citizens, and bringing drugs, crime, and death to our country. And the African-American community and the Hispanic community is being devastated with the jobs. The numbers are down 6, 7, 8, 9 percent. They're going to work, and they're saying, I'm sorry, we're not going to take you anymore. People that have worked there and worked there well for years are now being told that not, they no longer have a job because they have illegal immigrants coming in and taking their job. And I'll tell you what, any African-American or Hispanic, and you know how well I'm doing there, that votes for Kamala, you got to have your head examined because they, they are really screwing you. They are really screwing you, right? It's happening in numbers. You're going to hear about it. It's a big story. It's a big story. It's good. You're going to start hearing about it in a little while. But it's a big story. It's a real uh, — it's terrible. It's terrible. People that have been here for years, years, have, they've done a good job. They've got their family. Now, all of a sudden, one day, they don't have a job anymore. Kamala's open border policy is a complete and total betrayal of African-American communities and Hispanic-American communities. And unions are next. Oh, they're going to take on the unions. You watch. Virtually 100 percent of all of the jobs created in the last year have gone to migrants. I don't know if anybody knows that. The jobs that were created — first of all, the jobs that they got, which made their numbers look better, but they don't count, really. They're bounce-back jobs. Those are jobs that we had. We had the greatest economy in history. We had to take a pause for the pandemic. We did a good job on that. And then the people — they call it bounce-back. It's standard, a very standard phrase. But they call it bounce-back. They bounce back. But think of it, of the jobs created, almost every one of those jobs was taken by a migrant. Under Trump, Americans will always come first. Take a look. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. I stood there on the tarmac watching you check your watch. The chaotic and deadly U.S. evacuation from Afghanistan stunned Americans and the world and cost the lives of 13 U.S. soldiers. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. States. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. 
The suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. Got wrenching new details in the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national who crossed the unsecured southern border back in 2022. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nangaray. A fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. Only 18% say the economy is in excellent or good condition. U.S. inflation has hit a new 40-year high, increasing by 9.1% over the financial year. The cost of homes have spiked. Home buyers need to earn 80% more than they did in 2020 to afford a house. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. So she would do nothing different. Think of it. You have the worst administration in the history of our country. The happiest person, you've heard me say this, Jimmy Carter, because he looks brilliant by comparison. His administration by comparison is brilliant, so he's happy. He's an old guy now, but he's a happy man. Just this week, I was proud to receive the official and unanimous endorsement of America's Border Patrol agents, all 100 percent, all of them. And I was also honored to receive the endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police, something they don't do easily. I mean, you know, because — but they said, we have no choice. We have no choice. 400,000 law enforcement officers nationwide. So they did something to Biden that was amazing. They stole the election from him. I mean, I'm not a fan of Biden. Who could be? But they stole the election. They took it away like candy from a baby. And, and he's angry. And they're all angry. They're angry as hell. He, I think he likes me more than he likes her. Can you believe it? I believe. I believe that. I believe that, Steve. He likes me more than her. Can you believe it? But we will restore law and order in America. But here's what to do it. You have to do one thing. I don't want your money. I don't want anything. I just want you to get out and vote and get your friends to vote. That's all. I don't want money. Just go and vote. So we're pleased to be joined with some incredible people, friends of mine, talented people. You have a lot of great people in the state. Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones, please, Burt, stand up. Members of Congress, Mike Collins. Mike, great guy. Tough guy. Tough guy. We're not playing. You don't play games. He said, oh, put me in that committee. I want to be in that committee to cut costs. He'll do a better job. Nobody could do like that. Thanks, Mike. Somebody that's been unbelievable at searching out really bad, sick politicians on the other side. He was accused of <laughs> He walked in with a couple of young constituents to show him the Capitol, as I remember it. And they accused him of showing in rushes. What? And he became, instead of most people, they say, oh, please. He became the opposite, indignant and wild. And he has done some job on the committee. Barry Loudermilk. We love you, Barry. <laughs> Courage. Remember, I remember that. It's what they have pictures of walking around with two kids from the area, and the parents, they were Russian. These people are sick. And all it did is made him angry. And you have done some job, so we appreciate it. A man that we've said hello to, that you've, you've experienced, he's, he's got a big future. He's a fantastic guy and a friend of mine, Byron Donalds. Byron, thank you. A very strong, smart person, a woman who is uh, amazing, actually, to me. She's really amazing. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Thank you. And another warrior who's always been with us, Rich McCormick. Where's Rich? Thank you. Thank you, Rich. And a really, a really good guy, a former congressman, so respected by everybody. 
Doug Collins. Thank you, Doug. And your former senator, who was really a terrific person and respected so much in Washington and still is even, I think, even more respected now, Kelly Loeffler. Thank you, Kelly. Good job. The next congressman from Georgia's 3rd Congressional District, he's worked with me since, like, 2015, before 16. And everybody, after they got to know him, they said, could we use him, too? He was uh, — there was nobody like him. He's uh, going to be a congressman. I think he always wanted to be a congressman. And when the seat came up in his district where he grew up, I said, go ahead. And did he win? Man, did he win, Bert. What's going on with him? He's making us all look bad. He got so many votes. Brian Jack. Where's Brian Jack? Thank you. There he is. There he is. Is he a natural or what? <laughs> He's this. Everybody loves this guy. I love this guy. It's not my thing either, but I love him. He is a special character, that one. Are you enjoying it, Brian? Good. See, he's got the word. He's got the whole deal. He's good. He's going to be good for a long time. Your Insurance and Safety Fire Commissioner, John King. Thank you, John, very much. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Public Service Commissioner, Bubba McDonald. Bubba. What a man. A very special state senator. I just met his daughter. You know, believe it or not, I was at another place two hours ago. I've been doing this for 42 days straight without a rest. Can you believe it? 42. But two and a half hours ago, I was in another little different part of your state. And uh, this beautiful young woman said, my father is Brandon Beach. And I'm much more impressed with him now than I was <laughs> two and a half. This guy is such a great patriot. State Senator Brandon Beach, thank you. And your daughter is fantastic. She was so proud of you. And I said, he's that good, isn't he, right? She said, he's even better than that. You got a good daughter. So it's great to meet her. Georgia GOP Chairman Josh McCoon, and he is good. He is good. So, Josh, stand up for it. How the hell? Are we doing well? Are we doing as well as I'm hearing? All right, that's what I mean. I'm hearing. Um, and we're no longer in poll territory, right? We're in territory of, like, votes coming in. You know, we're not really looking so much at polls anymore. The votes are coming in, and they're coming in at a nice level for us, right? He's done a fantastic job. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. A woman who I've known for a long time, and she's always been there for us. She's a special woman, very religious person. Every time she sees me, she prays. And I say, from you, I accept that, and I will always accept it. Alveda King. Thank you, Alveda. Thank you. Good genes. She's got very good genes. Beautiful genes. And a friend of mine, one of the most successful business people in the country, a great, great developer from Florida, New York, and a lot of other places, but just a, a terrific person. And he's become — I think he loves politics, but he wants to just make sure we all do well. That's all he wants. Mr. Steve Whitcuff. Steve? Thank you, Steve. Great. Thanks, Steve. So here are the facts. Kamala Harris is a radical left Marxist, rated even worse than Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. That's Pocahontas. Remember, her mother said, she's Indian. Why? Because she's got high cheekbones. That was the reason. So I immediately called her Pocahontas. And that was the end of her. That was, she was leading in the presidential race, you know? And I don't think she likes me too much. But the mother said she had high cheekbones, and I said, poker. And then it, all the hell, the world went crazy. And she actually went out and got a test, remember? And she was so happy. One thousandth twenty-four. In other words, maybe a million years ago, there was a possibility. But she was happy. She said, this proves I'm an Indian. And I said, no, no, I have more Indian blood in me, and I don't have any. 
I'd love to, but I don't know. And that was the end of her presidential run. That was the end. I did the world a favor. Of course, look what we got. Look what we got. It's like Kamala destroyed our economy. She was an original creator of Defund the Police Movement. And anybody who wants to defund the police for even one week or one day is not worthy of being President of the United States. It's a radical left person. Kamala vowed to abolish ICE. She wants to let her millions of illegal Medicare, or she wants to raid Medicare. That's what they're going to do, raid Medicare, Social Security. She wants to ban fracking as California Attorney General. That's what she did. And she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. She said they're nonviolent crimes. She pledged to confiscate your guns and endorsed a total ban on handgun ownership. She even called for free sex changes for prisoners and illegal aliens in detention at taxpayer expense. And here's something she did that was terrible. On her resume, she said she worked at McDonald's. Oh. She never worked at McDonald's. So in conclusion, with your vote this November, we are going to fire Kamala and save America. Right. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always cherish our great American flag. We will cut your taxes, crush inflation, slash your prices, raise your wages, and create the greatest job boom the world has ever seen. We're going to do that. It's not going to even be hard. We are going to do it through low taxes and high tariffs, actually. We won't have any inflation. And we're going to do it. We're going to have a, a boom, and the auto industry is going to boom like it's never boomed before. We will hire American, buy American, build American, grow American, and show the whole world that the American dream is back, bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. I will stop the global theft of American jobs and turn the U.S. into the manufacturing superpower of the world. I will end the war in Ukraine, stop the chaos in the Middle East, and prevent World War III. I can do that. I will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect they so dearly I tell you what, we have to give our police. We have to take care of our police. And it's turning out to be more dangerous than ever. And once we give them that power back, it will be much less dangerous than ever. But that, right now, being a policeman or a policewoman is very dangerous. We have to give them back their honor, and we have to shield them, and we're going to uh, indemnify them against being hurt because, you know, they lose their — they do something that's good, and they lose their family. They lose their pension. They lose their house. They lose everything. Now, we're going to indemnify them if they're — Right, and we're going to find that most of them, they're going to write. And, you know, you always have bad apples. It's a shame. It's a horrible thing. But you, sometimes you have to just say, but we always have bad apples, and we'll do everything we can to get those bad apples the hell out. But we have to take care of our police and our law enforcement. That's why, that's why our country is going to hell with crime. We will strengthen and modernize our military. We will build a missile defense shield all around our country, and it'll be made right here. A lot of it's going to be made, as you know, you do a lot of it. It's going to be made in the USA, but it's going to be made a lot of it right here. And we will put the stars and stripes on the surface of Mars very soon. Very soon. We'll get Elon, get those rockets going, Elon. Get them. Get yeah, I'm going. You know, he's going to send a rocket up very soon to pick up the two guys. How would you like to be stuck in space? I said, when are you sending that? Very soon. I'm just about ready to send it. It's like, you know, it's like sending a bus for him. We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. They will get critical. Oh, and we will do this. Critical race theory. And transgender insanity will be out of our schools immediately. Immediately. 
and we will keep men out of women's sports. I will defend religious liberty, your right to free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. And the Second Amendment is under siege. You know that the Second Amendment is under siege. It will not be four years. It was under siege, I will tell you. But we're going to protect our Second Amendment 100 percent. After years of build — thank you. After years of building up other countries, we will protect our borders, defend our families, and protect our American suburbs, cities, and towns. We're going to protect our country. We will end the sanctuary cities immediately and stop illegal immigration once and for all. No more sanctuary cities. We will put American citizens first, American children first, American patients first, American taxpayers first, American workers first, and American communities first. We will put our country first. We will put communists, Marxists, and fascists last, and they will always stay last. From Savannah to Columbus, from Marietta to Macon, and from Augusta to Atlanta, we inherit the legacy of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their blood, sweat, and tears to defend this country they love. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up those big, beautiful skyscrapers. You're welcome. Won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and gave everything they had for our rights and for our freedom. And we are not going to lose the nation that they worked for and fought for and died for. We are not going to lose it. We will not be invaded. We will not be occupied. We will not be conquered. We will defeat the enemy at all levels of combat. We will defend our civilization, reclaim our sovereignty, and we will be a strong, proud, and free nation once again. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with the opportunity and hope of a lifetime. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and stop her radical left agenda once and for all. We want a landslide that's too big, too big. We can't let anything happen. Early voting is underway. Get everyone out. Get everyone you know. Just get them all out to vote. Go tomorrow. After all, we have been through together. We stand on the verge of the four greatest years in the history of our country. These will be, despite the fact that we've been set back so far by incompetent, vicious, foolish leadership, we will have the four greatest years in the history of our country. And with your help from now until Election Day, we will redeem America's promise and we will take back the nation that we love. Nothing will sway us, nothing will slow us, and no one will stop us. We will press forward to our magnificent American destiny. And together we will fight, fight, fight. We have to get out and vote. We have to win, win, win. We've got to win, win, win. If you don't win, 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 we've all had a good time, but it's not going to matter, right? Sadly, because what we've done is amazing. Three nominations in a row, what we've done, we've got to win. If we don't win, it's like uh, it, was all, it was all for not very much. We can't, uh, we can't let that happen. November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country, and together we will make America powerful again.
We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Georgia. God bless you. God bless you, Georgia. Thank you. God bless you all.